The Death Star has become a cultural icon and a widely recognized element of the Star Wars franchise. The first version, which appears in the original 1977 film Star Wars, is stated to be more than 160 kilometers in diameter, and is crewed by an estimated 1.7 million military personnel and 400,000 droids. It inspired numerous similar super weapons in fiction, as well as in other Star Wars work. The second Death Star appears in Return of the Jedi, and is significantly larger at 900 kilometers in diameter and while unfinished, is technologically more advanced than its predecessor. Built by the Galactic Empire to strengthen its control over the galaxy, both Death Stars are armed with kyber crystal-powered super lasers, which can destroy entire planets. If you look at this comparison, our moon is actually much larger than the original Death Star. Measuring at 160 kilometers in diameter, it's only about 5% the size of our moon. The second Death Star appears in Return of the Jedi, and is significantly larger at 900 kilometers in diameter and while unfinished, is technologically more advanced than its predecessor. The Death Star was designed to fire a single planet destroying superlaser powered by massive kyber crystals. It was the pet project of Emperor Palpatine, director Orson Kallen Krennic, and its eventual commander Grand Moff Wilhuff Tarkin. The station's equator comprised numerous docking ports of various sizes, all supported by the extraordinarily powerful tractor beam generator tower, which utilized several tractor beam projectors. Also, near the equator is Docking Bay 327, also known as Hangar Bay 327 was a docking bay aboard the Death Star. It served as a cargo loading assembly area. If the bay doors were opened, an atmosphere containment projector kept the station's internal atmosphere in. The most prominent weapon emplacement on the Death Star was its superlaser, a large, concave dish in the northern hemisphere made up the superlaser emitter and the superlaser focus lens. In addition to the Death Star's superlaser, its surface was peppered with 15,000 turbolaser batteries along with 768 tractor beam emplacements. As the station's defenses, these were installed in order to repel a large-scale fleet attack, rather than fend off individual starfighters. Let's take a look inside the Death Star. The Death Star has sublight and hyperdrive engines. The sublight engines are what allow it to move within star systems. The hyperdrive lets it travel through hyperspace and travel between systems. When firing, the energy was redirected into eight tributary beam shafts located around the perimeter of the superlaser, producing lasers that were converged using focusing coils, forming one large beam powerful enough to destroy a planet. Next to the superlaser are the firing field amplifier, the induction hyperphase generator and the targeting field generator, which is used to precisely align the firing chamber arrays. This setup would prevent the crystals from burning out and overloading, sending dangerous levels of waste heat back into the Death Star's main reactor. Above the firing field amplifier is the super laser power cell. The power cell store the energy needed to fire the super laser. The tractor beam power generator trench was one of seven locations where tractor beam was connected to the Death Star reactor. It was where Obi-Wan Kenobi severed the connection, allowing the Millennium Falcon to escape. The entry area to the corridor was guarded by two stormtroopers, but Kenobi distracted them with the Force. The Death Star featured an entirely man-made atmosphere. A vast, central cylindrical atmosphere processing unit ensured the air inside the station was regulated. Next to unit is the ion drive reactor and toward the center is the main power generator used to provide most of the power for electric power grids inside the station. At the center of the Death Star is the hypermatter reactor that fed energy into various components of the super laser, including the primary power amplifier, the super laser power cell, the firing field amplifier, and the induction hyperphase generators. Further down is the water tanks and the power cell. 
The power cell provided the necessary voltage for the circuits to various weapons, droids, starships and space stations. All information collected by the Death Star's bridge, sensor arrays, communication centers, and space traffic control were routed through the station's central and sector computers as well as displayed on banks of monitors and holoprojectors situated throughout the overbridged. A thermal exhaust port or simply called an exhaust port was a small opening on the Death Star that led to its reactor core, which was deliberately designed by Galen Erso as an act of sabotage to give the station a critical vulnerability. The target area is only 2 meters wide and is right below the main port. In 1977, the Death Star, the ultimate weapon in the Star Wars space opera franchise was introduced as an iconic moon-sized military space station that was the Galactic Empire's ultimate weapon of doom. The Death Star was to be an instrument of terror, meant to cow treasonous worlds with the threat of annihilation. It had a formidable array of turbo lasers and tractor beam projectors, giving it the firepower of greater than half the Imperial Starfleet. I hope you enjoy this in-depth look inside the Death Star. Please like and consider subscribing to my channel for more 3D animations.